thanks for choosing to watch the video. I'm out looking for perch again, but this video is for the carp boys. How to catch carp in winter using maggots. And I'm a bit worried about this one. I've tried to cram quite a lot of information in. You know, I don't know everything, uh, and I'm sure you've got your own way of doing things, and I'm sure you do well. But I was just wanting to share as much as possible about how I go about trying to catch carp in winter. That includes bait application, rigs, uh, location, and just my general all-round approach. Fortunately, we do catch a few fish along the way, which hopefully will break things up a bit. Basically, it's me finding a spot, applying some bait, and fishing solid bags with maggots over the top. If you do like the video, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks again for watching, and um, hopefully it will help you put a few more carp on the mat this winter. Welcome to the video. Um, we're coming up for Christmas. It's cold, and I'm going to show you how to carry on getting bites through the winter using maggots. Okay, I'm going to tell you what everybody tells you when it comes to uh, choosing a venue to fish for carp in the winter, and that is to choose it carefully. You know, the fishing's going to be tricky in the winter. Choose somewhere that's got a lot of stock and um, get a few bites, you know, have some fun. Try and stay warm. Maggots, absolute classic winter bait. Let me take you through exactly what I put in my mix. Okay, so we're gonna start with a mix. Uh, I've got empty bucket, uh, a few handfuls of pellet. They're mainly micro pellet, like small, small, tiny pellets. Don't want too many of these. We just want a small amount of the pellets, uh, just enough to attract them. Last thing we want them to do is get full up on pellets. Um, the water's very, very cold anything that they feed on, we want them to be highly attractive, but to actually pass through the fish very, very quickly. And now, of course, the main ingredient, the maggots. As you can see there, I have mainly got red, so let's get plenty of those. Give them a good mix. What goes really well with maggots, I've found, is krill. Um, now you can either use krill powder or you can use krill boilies. I'm just gonna crush up just a few, a few krill boilies, add those. Again, we don't want too much, too much feed in there. Right, next, just a uh, little bit of powder. So we're gonna put a bit of ground bait in. Again, krill powder is, is amazing if you can get that. And now finally, just a little bit of corn. Again, not too much of this. I mean, it does pass through them quite quickly, corn. Um, but the main reason I'm using it is because that's what I've got on the head. That's what I'm using is a bit bait, bait corn. So just a little bit of colour. And I, that's, that's about it. I can't even see in there. But um, yeah, so let's load up the spod and get it out in the pond. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about bait application and how much of this to actually put out. What you've got to think about is it is winter. You don't want to fill it in. In fact, when I very first get to a venue, quite often I might just put out two solid bags, you know, fish them almost like singles. Obviously, one of the most important things is to locate the fish. Dotting around solid bags, moving them quite frequently is quite a good way of doing that. 
It's almost like fishing singles, but with solid bags, moving them around, trying to find the fish, you know, moving them every half hour, 45 minutes. Um, that's also a good method with solid bags, you know, especially in winter when they're shoaled up, you know, you're just trying to locate where they are. If nothing happened, then uh, and if it's a new lake, I'll put a lead on and I will try and find a spot just with a bare lead, not a marker float, just getting a feel for if there are any spots out there. And then as usual, as everyone does, sort of clip it up when you do find a spot and wrap it around the distance sticks or whatever, just so that you know where that spot is. Here, I'm quite lucky. I know the spot um, or I know the spots out in front of this swim. And I've got quite a long section of bank, which means that I leave the distance sticks in the holdall. I drop the lead in a certain spot on the bank and I know if I walk back towards a tree um, then I clip up there and I know I'm at the right distance. Then all I do is I simply do exactly the same with my spod rod. I come a little bit short because uh, it's quite deep water. Uh, generally one foot for every three foot of water shorter with a spod rod um, which you know it's about 10 or 11 foot out there so that means you know three or four foot shorter with the spod rod and uh, yeah get nice and accurate it's quite important uh, you know try and get everything as tight and as accurate as you can nice little trap out in the pond and uh, yeah that's that's basically the way that I do it I'd suggest putting out three or four spots out initially see what happens and kind of play it by ear if you get a fish Here we go. Fish on. Back on the clutch. Yes, boss. Look at that. There we go. They're in that net. There we go, there's another. Not massive, but I don't care how big they are at this time of year. Just nice to be getting bites. Let's get him back. Right, not sure where I got to before I had that fish. Um, yeah, came from nowhere that one. You've got to play it by ear. If you get fish, then obviously put more bait in. You've got to, you know, experience will tell you how much you need to put in. As I say though, I think initially, you know, three or four spots. Obviously, it depends on the lake, the conditions, uh, the stock levels. For this place, well stocked lake, three or four spawns is enough, I would say, initially. See what happens. If you're not getting anything, obviously sit on your hands for a bit. Uh, if you get a fish, then uh, put more in. Don't be afraid to put more in. <laughs> Before I show you how to tie up the solid bag with maggots, I'm going to show you how to tie up the rig I'm going to put inside it. Uh, it's a short little blowback rig uh, with some fake corn. Uh, even though I'm going to use maggots in the bag, I prefer to use fake corn on the hair. Let me show you how I tie this up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, take a length of coated braid, not even a foot of that. There it is, I will use a stripper tool. So there we go, we just pull it through the tool, take off the outer coating. Um, it's going to be a mainly supple rig, which is what you want when you're fishing in a solid bag. Make a little loop on the end, and that is what I will mount my fake corn on. And there you go. So there's a couple of bits of fake corn 
mounted onto the hair, one piece of buoyant pop-up corn, and one piece of slow sinking maize. And I know that that is just the right kind of buoyancy that I want for my solid bag. I wanna make sure that it's semi-buoyant and that it's gonna go uh, quite quickly back into the fish's mouth. So two bits of corn mounted. And there you can see I've just tied on a tiny little rig ring. I am gonna put on the curve shank hook. Like I said, this is a size six mugger braid. Always goes in the back of the eye, threaded down, put the point of the hook through the rig ring. You want the rig ring to actually come up a bit higher than that and pretty much be opposite the barb of the hook. And then you need to just tie it on, knotless knot style. And I go about seven times around the shank of the hook and back up through the eye. Pull it tight. We've now got our blowback rig. So absolutely smashing, that's exactly what we need. You can judge the length of the rig. As I said, you need this to be short. You don't want it to be a long rig at all. So let's do a figure of eight at the top. Quite a nice big loop at the top. Now pulling it tight like that. Now we can trim off the excess. There's the finished rig. Um, you can see can see how much I've stripped off there a hell of a lot I've only left a small bit of coating at the top which I actually quite like because it almost acts as a as a kicker or a sleeve that stiff bit is gonna help the rig reset I don't like completely supple rigs I don't think they reset very well and there's a lot of small fish in here constantly picking up bait possibly and moving it around and it's getting wafted about and I think with all my rigs they need to be able to reset and I think that stiff little section of coated at the top is gonna to help it do that. All that's left to do is to mount it onto a lead. When you buy an inline lead, has to be an inline lead for a solid bag, it will come with a uh, tube going through the center. Well, we wanna knock that out because we're gonna replace that. This is a, a solid stem that's created uh, to be used in conjunction with a solid bag. And you can see it's got a ring swivel at one end and it's got if I can pull it apart, it's got met a metal a metal section that goes into the sleeve and it comes out at the top and you tie your main line straight onto that metal section. Now this means with solid bags, certainly with, with pellets, you can make a load of these up in advance and tie them onto your main line as you need them, meaning that you can prepare everything at home, which is great, which is what we want. I wouldn't actually try preparing in advance solid bags that have got maggots in because um, they sweat too much, they wriggle around in the bag, moving your hook bait around and it just doesn't really work. But I mean, you can tie them up five or 10 minutes before you, um, you're gonna tie them on, but I wouldn't do them any longer in advance than that. We've got our stem, I'm gonna get the rig and I'm just gonna put it through the ring swivel and then this bit's a bit fiddly and why you need quite a large loop at the top i'm going to push the corn through the loop hook through the loop and then just pull it tight if you can see pull it tight so that then i have the rig attached to the ring swivel just like that all i have to do is take the lead slide it onto the rig like so and so there you go there you have it a great little short blowback rig to go into a solid bag. So there we go, that's another one. Great to get action at this time of year. Another one on the solid bag with maggots. Let's slip him back and see if we can get another. Let's show you how to make up one of the solid bags. So here it is, it's the maggot bag. Um, you can see there, nice tight PVA bag full of maggots. You can maybe, you know, you can just about see the, the corn in the bottom there. Um, let's show you how to make this up. So, first thing I do, obviously, is get one of the bags. And I like to use these collars. This is the larger size of the two collars that I've got. So, so it's loaded. A little bit of ground bait, and I always keep this in a little pot. I like to have just a bit of attraction in the bottom of the bag. There we go. You can 
see that's going in there, two bits of corn. I'm quite careful about how that actually sits in the bag. I want it to be right in the bottom. In go the maggots. There we go. And I'm gonna pop the lead in. Just push them down with the lead. Putting a few more in, just around the lead. Make sure it's all compact. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Remove the collar. Now I've got them there in the bag and I can start to twist it off, tap it down, make sure it's nice and compact, nothing squashed, get the PVA tape. And we're gonna wrap that round a couple of times, tie it off with just a couple of overhand knots, trim that off, you can start to sort of trim it up slightly around the top just to make it a little bit neat. A lot of people, of course, they, they want these really compact and they press in the corners, which I do get if you're fishing at range. Here we're not, um, you know, I'm only about uh, nine wraps out. So I don't, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be difficult to hit that range. And there you go. That is the maggot bag ready, ready to go out. is like a block of ice that is cold it just goes to show that you can keep the bites coming through cold conditions with the right technique you can catch some stunning winter carp like this look at it absolutely stunning brings me to the end of my short day session going home one happy man so get out there get on the maggots and good luck